Let me, let me just say one word. Uh, get down to it. No human has a right to act upon a wrong belief. We need to seek the proper relief. relief. Hello, I am the Red Monk, and I currently have my uh, phone suspended by duct tape. So if the camera wiggles a bit, uh, don't worry about it. I don't. It's not doing it right now, but this thing, it's like it's like suspended on a tripod of duct tape. It is so fucking weird. But uh, I'm about to lay down some serious fucking shit, and this is uh, I want to talk about some people I talked to at work today. Who were uh, incredibly uh, what you would consider, you know, the whole alt right thing, the whole uh, uh, "don't tread on me" kind of thing, you know, the whole thing, the whole uh, "I'm a proud American" type deal. And I thought I could try to decipher this whole mindset they have, this whole uh, uh, alt right mindset, and sort of talk about how it is incredibly uh, closed minded in a way. And a lot of people see this thing as uh, left and right, which is a gross understatement. It is such a gross simplification of politics in every single way, all right? Now, I'm not sure if you know about it, but there's this uh, chart, and it's supposed to describe political beliefs, and it it doesn't do it too well. It describes it to some extent, but there is... a uh, it goes up and down and left and right, and the right side is more, you know, conservative, and the left side is more liberal. In general, it is a very uh, general classification, and I was talking to these people at work, and this is, I'll recite what they said, I'll paraphrase it, they're like, okay, my, uh, my dad doesn't go to father reunions anymore because uh, my cousin showed up, and he's an, an incredible libtard. And he started dissing the American government and started talking about how all the wars were in vain. And my dad and his uncle grabbed the shotgun and threatened his life like a proud American. That's what they said. And I think that is uh, an incredible, uh, gross understatement. There's this mindset that uh, the they see uh, the left and the right. And they're like, I'm on this side. The other people are on that side, and they're they're just crazy. They have no rationality, no reason, and I'm right, they're wrong. And they take no understanding of what they actually think, because a really important way to have, you know, like, strong beliefs is to play devil's advocate with yourself and see if it sounds right. And clearly, these people just heard something, and uh, it... It's incredibly uh, emotionally uh, satisfying, this route they took, and it's simple. You know, it's right. They see this uh, mindset they have, and they see it as, I'm right, they're wrong, right? And it is incredibly more complicated than that. And I thought in this video, I could try to, because I've, I've played devil's advocate with myself. I believe that the, real, I think America, uh, my favorite way to describe America is, it could be worse. You know, like, we have a sewage system. The There's a lot of profiteering that goes along with, uh, you know, the whole bourgeoisie that actually causes issues. That causes real world consequences. I'll just try to describe their mindset from the way uh, they'll see it. This whole, uh, uh, I threatened because it was all in vain. And this whole, uh, they try to sound, my coworkers, I talk to them, they try to sound incredibly, you know, tough. In their voice, they try to sound like they are the they're they're right, and that's it. They're just they know everything. They don't bother changing it or attempting to find anything else because they're right, and that's it. Right? It appeals to sort of a egotism. Right? It is incredibly emotionally driven. It might not be you know uh, clearly emotionally driven like sappy or like sad or anything. It's more emotionally driven on the side of, you know, egotism, and they can say, okay, our current system is sort of like a uh, natural selection, and I'm surviving in it, so therefore I must be the best, and anyone who disagrees with that is just, you know, wusses who are scared of the natural order, and if you are not scared of the natural order, 
uh, you are uh, a true man. You are a true American. And this just it's a sort of kit. You know, it's a sort of uh, set out beliefs, and they can. It's very easy to describe. You know, you can you can sort of tell how political someone is just by if they try to be all I'm a I'm a manly man, I'm a I'm a man, <laughs> and they try to act all tough because they're it's incredibly emotionally driven. They're just driven to that uh, uh that egotism, and they can. Uh, they can share it very easily. Like, I, when I talk to my brother, we'll talk like four hours about politics. And we'll like play devil's advocate to each other. We'll talk about, you know, how do you even go about changes that would make the world a better place. And we understand that we don't understand the whole piece of pie. We understand that, you know, the world is unjust. And we understand that wrong things, you know, happen to good people. And uh, we try to work in the positive sum game. Now, I'm going to describe what I think was is actually a good thing, right? Like I said before, there's the that chart is just a classification. I really think there's a lot of, uh, you know, changes need to be made to limit corruption because they're, like, America, like, compared to fucking China, like, America's not that corrupt, but it is still corrupt, you know, and changes still need to be made. And we live in a, a positive sum game. Now, uh, I think the best uh, world would be one that works best with the positive sum game. And our current world is focused too much on uh, short term greed. And the sole definer of what is absolutely anything is what can turn a profit in the financial quarter. Which, you know, clearly, for example, climate change, that will cost people money, right? It, it can't, fixing climate change will not make a profit in a financial quarter. And the consequences come longer than a financial quarter, right? And same thing as uh, not paying your workers, right? That comes, it may not be immediately beneficial to not pay your workers, but we live in this uh, positive sum game. And I'll describe what that is. That is the fact that uh, you are best off if other people around you you don't even know are as best off. And this sort of uh, aspect of the world has been allowed to breathe to some extent. And the positive sum game is just something that started with the uh, Industrial Revolution and farming technology. Actually, farming technology started the, the positive sum game. And I'll uh, describe the positive sum game compared to the zero sum game. Now, imagine, right? Like a thousand five hundred years ago. Remember the, the Crusades? When they would just be like lines of thousands of people with uh, giant blades that they would just literally think how painful it is to get fucking stabbed to death. And that was the world. That's how people found power because uh, back before we had, you know, currency and uh, farming technology, the, the sort of find of how powerful, you know, government was, how powerful a king was, is how much land they had. That was a sort of finer. So to get big, to get powerful, you would have to take land from other people, right? That's a zero-sum game. There's no gain. Land is a limited resource, and the only way you can get more land is if another person around you loses it, right? And that's where the Crusades came from, right? Now, you know, soil makes plants grow, no matter uh, which rich dude taxes the people that live there. But uh, there were, no, no one wasn't like, okay, maybe it's wrong to murder people for... Uh, whoever can tax people who live in that land. You know, it was all about the power in that, uh, uh, just cruel, this sheer evilness of what the world used to be with the crusades and how people would just line up to, to murder each other in very painful ways. The zero sum game was based off of how land is a limited resource. And the only reason, the only way to get, uh, more power, more land is by taking it from other people usually by force, right? And then, during the 1800s, around there, we had the Industrial Revolution. We had the advent of literal farming technology. And uh, a parcel of land could feed a lot more people, and we had a unified currency. And uh, with technology, we were able to make more resources than... uh, We were able to make uh, more resources... 
uh, just off of one parcel of land, and the, now the sole definer of what is you know power is money. And with this positive sum game, we we have a positive sum of resources. We have a gain of resources. And I'll describe uh, the three major aspects of a positive sum game and how it led to people stop murdering each other for uh, land, uh, and because you could become powerful through currency. Right, because uh, land was no longer the definer of what made you powerful. It is uh, resources. And with the positive sum game, there are uh, three major aspects that I want to get into. That is the best, you know, sustainable thing. And this is how we come to where we are. You know, we live. I well, you know, uh, we're lower class people are fucked to begin with because they had no money. But the reason they aren't getting uh, murdered. Or forced to murder other people for land is because of the three aspects of the positive sum game. And the first one is a uh, think of a poor farmer in Africa who he is poor and the only resources he makes is enough to feed himself and his family. How do you gain from that? How do you gain from a poor farmer in Africa who only can make enough resources to feed his family? You gain absolutely fucking nothing. That he might as well not exist. You, know, you might as well just kill him and take his land because uh, if he can only help himself, there's there's no reason, you know, no way he could possibly help you. But let's say he had enough, you know, money that he could, you know, go to school, right? He could send his kids to school and they could have money. They can uh, contribute to demand. Now think if only uh, two thousand people had enough money to pay for the cure for cancer treatment. I mean, so little resources we put into that. But let's say if uh, thousands of people, like millions of people could afford uh, to pay for cancer treatment, a lot more money we put into that resource. If that uh, poor farmer in Africa was uh, better off, if he had more money, he could uh, contribute to demand. If you were the only person who had money in the entire world, you would not be as best off as if everyone else in the entire world had money as well because they can contribute to demand. And the, the second thing is the fact that uh, money is only a classification. And I'll get into why this is a flaw of our current system. And uh, if the farmer had money, uh, he could circulate it, right? He would take money in and he would spend it. Now, money is only rep representative. And money that is moving around is a representative of a, of a stimulated economy, right? If money does not move around, it as much as well does not even exist, right? Because it is not making change happen. And that is a, that's a flaw of our current system because our sole definer of what is sustainable in our current system is if it can hoard money. Our current system promotes hoarding money like a freaking pig to suck up as much resources as possible and starve everyone else out, which is not positive for the positive sum game. It doesn't make other people around you better off, right? And uh, the third aspect of the positive sum game is the fact that, uh, let's say the this farmer in Africa could pay to send his children to school. The children could, you know, work on research and become, you know, more people. He could also become richer themselves. And you see, they could, they could uh, contribute to technology and make discoveries, you know? Like, when you, like, fly in a plane, you didn't make that plane. Other people around you, you did not know, had to be as well off as possible to go to school and become an engineer to create that plane, right? And if there was uh, no demand for that, they would not make that plane in the first place, right? So you, as a person, are as best off as possible if people around you are as best off as possible. That is the that is what got us to where we are now, and uh, it, frankly, that uh, aspect of life has been allowed to breathe to some aspect. But you know, we look at where we live right now, how people have to work like twelve jobs just to uh, uh, pay for rent, and people can't go to school because it's so fucking expensive. That is a that is a problem in our life, right? And since shit like you know universities aren't directly profitable unless you have it cost absurd amounts of money 
right? It is not contributing. It's not about what is sustainable and best for the world. It is about what can turn a profit. And I think that is the flaw of our system. And uh, people see this and they don't, they just want to feel like everything is perfect, right? They're, it may not be, you know, the softer emotions. It may not, it can be sort of a uh, different, less common emotions that these, uh, my coworkers, these uh, conservative people have. And they're incredibly emotionally driven. They want to think that where we are right now is as best as we could possibly be. And it sure as hell fucking not. It is sure as hell changes need to be made. And they could just say, you know what? What we have right now is good. And I'm right. You know? And, I don't know, it's really uh, important. Another flaw that these people have is that they they don't... Uh, make changes right they're just like they want to th- they it like says is it is emotionally driven it is based off of their uh, you know egotism and their wantingness to push other people down by just saying they're wrong that's it they're wrong they had no reason to get there you know like these people are you know more counteracting to my beliefs and i took the time to understand where they came from and where they came from is an incredibly uh egotistic emotionally driven and a part of these, another emotion is the fact that they don't want to change. They want to feel like they're so smart. They're Mr. Uh, whatever, uh, poorly animated Jimmy Neutron, who's just right about everything, and they don't have to change. Like, when me and my brother talk, you know, this is, shit like this is really complicated. They, they want to simple it down to be as simple as possible. They just want to be like, okay, uh, uh, my egotism. And that's, they boil it down just to that, so... They can feel like they're in control. They can feel like they're they're right, you know. And you know, it's nothing's black and white. You know, it's a scale, and you have to you know play devil's advocate with yourself. You have to take a different perspective and see what is wrong with my current beliefs. You know, what can I what can I say to make my beliefs better? How can I change? How can I change? Change is really important. What you do is you start somewhere, and then you you try to find. You slowly work towards what's right, and these people, they they don't they they have too much pride to accept the fact that what they were told uh, off tops was simply incorrect, simply does not help the positive sum game. So, yeah, my coworkers fucking pissed me off. It's like they came and call me a fucking limbtard or something. It's like, dude, at least I have the the balls to accept the fact that I wasn't immediately right when I was two years old, you know, it's about making change. And even if they say it in a sort of, huh, I'm tough, it, it capitalism works, because it's kind of like natural selection. Dude, if you want to, as an argument, people say that our current system works because it replicates a random aspect of nature. In that case, if random aspects of nature made political beliefs magically right, people should start uh, eating each other. Right, they should start just swallowing people whole. Probably the big people can swallow the smaller people whole easier, because you know an aspect of nature was that a uh, big cell ate small cell, and the uh, one lived inside the other and became the mitochondria, or something like. And they that's how eukaryotic cells came to be. And since you know, if it replicates a random aspect of nature. People should just start swallowing people whole because that's what makes stuff right. I mean, it's just so surprising. They, just, they, they pick something, it, it boosts their ego. It's simple, so it sounds right. You know, they can they can very much easily agree. They can just say, huh, Trump, huh, uh, they can share their beliefs that easily. You know, like to actually talk about the positive sum game and how... Uh, benefiting the most amount of people, making as most amount of people as best off as possible, and actually, you know, leaving a planet for our children, an actual fucking planet that fucking isn't fucked by uh, profiteering, is a lot more, you know, it's a lot less satisfying. It doesn't, like, in their worldview, everything's perfect, everything's dandy. And, you know, no matter how perfect something gets, Change is always going to have to happen. Change is really important, right? You look at uh, 
you know, the older you get, the wiser you get, and you make changes to your beliefs, right? And no one's right off tops. Uh, you know, back like 20 million years ago, people were just fucking cavemen or some shit. They made changes to get where we are. Change is really important, right? You know, changes have to happen. But, uh, yeah. Conclude. I think it is, uh, important to have feelings. This is, um, I ordered this off of Amazon. It's important to have feelings. Uh, if you do anything else except for talk like this and don't say that, uh, uh, the way people make these beliefs, and they make these beliefs in an in incredibly emotional way. They're, they're incredibly emotionally driven, and they just, uh... And their uh, their emotions are they want to they they care about the world and they want to think that it's right they want to think that everything's all cool and dandy because they're thinking of just how seriously fucked some things are it does not feel good it's actually kind of stressful so uh, these conservatives my coworkers make these beliefs and say yeah you know what we're right the world is right right now and everything's cool you know climate change isn't real because everything's perfect. And in fact, there's a lot of wrong shit, and they just don't want to accept that. That's a very simple belief, and it's very easy to share with other people. Like they can just say, "Hey," uh, they can just say, huh, "Who liberals? Huh, libtards?" And they can totally uh, share their kit. They can show their uh, basic collection of beliefs very easily. It's very shareable, and you know the truth, you know the positive sum game, and how corruption is bad. And how having a planet that is sustainable is good is a lot more uh, complicated. And this uh, this conservative belief is very simple. It is very easy to say, uh, libtards, right? <laughs> Freedom isn't free. Um, and the, the final thing is it, uh, it, it's very egotistic. It's very much, you know, I'm right, they're wrong. I don't even attempt to understand their beliefs. Because they're just wrong, period. There's there's nothing else to it. They're just wrong. Which is so fucking stupid. I mean, I I, I hate to be like, I'm, I'm smarter than other people. But like, if people really fucking think this way, it's like just retain a thought in your head longer than three seconds. And you'll see that uh, it is more complicated. It is a lot more, you know, changes need to be made. And damn. And like I try, and they and you try to talk to them, and they just it goes through one ear and goes out the other, right? Because they they don't want to be wrong. They want to be right. They want everything to be right, and they want to be the uh, super. Like I said, it boosts their ego. So, ah, this video went on long enough, but uh, goodbye, goodbye. And remember, it's okay to have feelings, you fucking libtard.